So you don't have a map, you don't have a compass, but you're still finding your way around a woodland environment. How are you doing that? Well, it's terrain association. We're gonna put some of the terms together with what actually is happening and how you're figuring it out and make it very simple for everybody. So let's take a look. Terrain association is used, I'm gonna say 99% of the time by most people. Anytime you go into a uh, wilderness type setting, woodland type setting, and you navigate around, you're using this. You might just not realize you're using it, but you are. So what we're gonna look at is putting some terms to what you're actually doing. And by doing that, it might just broaden your horizon just that little bit so you can just be a little bit better when you're out there. Now, you might be saying, hey, I don't do this, I don't even know what it is, but you really do. If you go out into the woods without a compass or without a map, and you go to the same location, it can be a hunting stand, it can be a trail that you walk down and go off to a little campsite, anything like that, anytime that you move around a wilderness environment without a compass and a map, you're really using terrain navigation. So let's look at some of the terms and see how I actually use them when I'm out here. Number one is guide rails. Guide rails are very important because they allow you to travel a set walkway and I say that very loosely. So what is a guide rail? Well it's the same as along the edge of a road. It's not going to let you bear off or get lost anywhere because you're on a specific trail. So that can be a deer run, that can be an actual hiking trail, it can be an old access road, a logging road, ridge top on a hill. And how it actually works when we put this into practice is you're walking along your road to get into your hunting stand you're on a guide rail. That is what is guiding you along. Now a guide rail can also be a stream bed or a creek. Anything like that is what a guide rail is. So the road I'm standing on right now that I just walked from up top down in, guide rail. It's guiding me along. Number two, blazes. Now tree blazes, yes, you are damaging the tree. Don't go on anybody's property and do this, but if it's up to you living and a tree dying, stay alive, okay? I do this on my own property because it's my property. Oh yeah, I, oh, people are gonna go nuts because I'm hurting a tree. Yeah, I hurt trees. But here, check this out. So the access road that I'm still standing on for this video, I walk on this all the time. Behind me on my property, I need to know how to get in at a spot. So rather than memorizing what a tree looks like or a certain point, what did I do? You can see I put that blaze. Now it's old, there's some sap coming out of it, but I put it on that tree. So when I'm on this access road right here and I look over to my side and I see that blaze, I know that that's a good cut in point. So that's just a marker that we're putting in place. Let's take a look at a couple other blaze marks that you can use during this type of navigation. If you've done any hiking, you know what blaze marks are blazes, whatever you want to call them. If you're out in a wilderness setting, woodland setting, you can just do this with your knife or your ax. One single blaze means straight ahead. Two blazes with the offset blaze shows the direction of travel that the route is taking. So this right here with the offset to the right means that the trail is going to head off to the right. Same thing for the left. We have a left offset blaze means the trail is going to head off to the left. Last but not least, three blazes, danger ahead. So if you're coming up on your trail and there's a huge dip or a cliff, anything like that, you might want to put something just so you know that you can get seriously injured up ahead. Next key feature that you need to understand are backstops. Now backstops can be a variety of different things. For me, at my school property, straight behind me we have a large mountain that just runs all the way down the property very far so i always tell students that if you're out on a school property by yourself and you hit the base of the mountain stop it's a backstop it's going to stop you from going any further same as the other side of my property we have a stream bed that runs if you hit the stream bed boom you hit a backstop do not go any further now some of the locations that i train in i will walk until i hit the stream bed backstop and then follow that stream bed handrail to my camp so that's how we start to add these things together so backstops can be a variety of different things from fields to mountains to dips in the landscape creeks rivers lakes anything like that can work as a backstop when you hit it you know that you either went too far or you need to go somewhere else last term number four is aiming off 
Now, I don't think I use this, but when I really thought about this video, I do use this a lot more than I actually think I do. Now, what aiming off means is that we're going to go somewhere in a direction that really might not be the most conducive. So it's not a straight line to our camp. It might be veered off one way or the other. So think of it like this. I'm headed down right now to shoot another video at a location where I have a camp set up. But to get to that camp walking straight through the woods, I could probably get there because I know the terrain pretty good, but sometimes I can overshoot it somewhere. So I know if I just walk towards the lake, hit the lake, follow the edge of the lake, it will lead me back to my camp. So not only are we using a backstop as the lake, but I'm also aiming off. I'm not headed directly to my site because I don't want to get too misplaced. So I hit to the lake, hit the backstop, use the lake edge as a guide rail, take me down right into camp. Now, if I threw some blazes in there, we're using every navigation technique that we talked about to get us from point A to point B. So you can see that probably what you do to go into your hunting stand or on your trap line or your favorite fishing spot or even your favorite walk in the woods is all terrain association. So it's a good thing to understand. And by knowing these terms, you can put them into practice and maybe expand your um, depth and knowledge of travel a little bit more in the outdoors. Last thing I can say is that terrain association is what I use 99.95 somewhere in there percent of the time. I do this all the time. So going in is the same thing as coming out. I'm gonna think of those landmarks and use them on the way out. So if I hike a stream in, I might hit a blaze mark somewhere, go into camp. I'm coming back out, hitting the blaze mark, hitting the stream and just working my way back. The major downfall with this though, is number one, if you're in a heavily, heavily wooded area with the same terrain, you might not be passing enough features to actually grasp this concept. And that's where you can get confused, spun around, backed up and even lost. It's also important that you know if you're traveling over long, long distance, if you're gonna hike 30 miles, to actually be able to remember all these terrain features can be very difficult. Now, if you're just getting up on top of a ridgeline, hiking that ridgeline till you hit another ridgeline and making a right or something like that, it might work. But long, long distance, probably not the conducive thing, having a map and compass. Again, desert environments, you're not gonna be able to do this because you're not hitting these landmarks the way we are here in Appalachia. So just keep that in mind. But this is a very useful technique for a smaller area, especially around camp, going out and scouting. This is very, very good. Just don't get lost, guys. So this was Dan Wolak with Cold Cracker Bushcraft. Here's what I have to say. You team this up with my map, compass, and terrain association, Boom, you have the whole system. I don't think you need much more for an outdoorsman to be able to navigate your way around. This was Dan Wolak with Cold Cracker Bushcraft. Check us out over coldcrackerbushcraft.com and until next video, stay in the woods guys.